Let's go do it again. Let's show them why 1984 won't be like 1984. I'm Steve Jobs. It is 1958. IBM passes up the chance to buy a young fledgling company that has invented a new technology called Xerography. Two years later, Xerox is born, and IBM has been kicking themselves ever since. It is 10 years later the late 60s. Digital equipment, DEC, and others invent the mini-computer. IBM dismisses the mini-computer as too small to do serious computing and therefore unimportant to their business. DEC grows to become a multi-hundred million dollar corporation before IBM finally enters the mini-computer market. It is now 10 years later, the late 70s. In 1977, Apple, a young, fledgling company on the West Coast, invents the Apple II, the first personal computer as we know it today. IBM dismisses the personal computer as too small to do serious computing and unimportant to their business. The early 80s, 81. Apple II has become the world's most popular computer, and Apple has grown to a $300 million company, becoming the fastest growing corporation in American business history. With over 50 competitors vying for a share, IBM enters the personal computer market in November 81 with the IBM PC. 1983. Apple and IBM emerge as the industry's strongest competitors, each selling approximately $1 billion worth of personal computers in 1983. Each will invest greater than $50 million for R&D and another $50 million for television advertising in 1984, totaling almost one quarter of a billion dollars combined. The shakeout is in full swing. The first major firm goes bankrupt, with others teetering on the brink. Total industry losses for 83 outshadow even the combined profits of Apple and IBM for personal computers. It is now 1984. It appears IBM wants it all. Apple is perceived to be the only hope to offer IBM a run for its money. Dealers, initially welcoming IBM with open arms, now fear an IBM-dominated and controlled future. They are increasingly and desperately turning back to Apple as the only force that can ensure their future freedom. <laughs> IBM wants it all and is aiming its guns on its last obstacle to industry control, Apple. Will Big Blue dominate the entire computer industry? The entire information age? Was George Orwell right about 1984? January 
2024, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. And you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. That ad is going to run one week before Macintosh is introduced. And our ad agency that put it together is here today, Shia Day. Jay Shia's here, the uh, principal, uh, Lee Clow and Steve Hayden that uh, wrote the copy and did the creative are also here. You might, I guess they just heard what you thought. The machine's done. Software is done. Factories built. Stage is set. House lights are dimming. The curtain's going up. And we're on. Let's go do it again. Let's show them why 1984 won't be like 1984. It's computer war. Can Apple's Macintosh take IBM's peanut? Can great new ideas compete against one of the best managed corporations in the world? Monday, January 23rd, 1984. Doug, at least one company hoping tomorrow is going to be a new beginning for it. We have a hundred days to convince the world that Mac is the third industry milestone product. In a market full of IBMs and IBM clones, the people at Apple decided the only way to succeed was with a radically different computer. The Macintosh is small and friendly, almost cute for a computer, and people who see it get excited. I mean, I sat down and operated this computer, and I didn't know anything about it. All I did was point the thing to the little picture, and, and it did it. This thing eats 8088s for breakfast. IBM had no comment today. Analysts expect its reaction will come with new technology in the marketplace. I think Mac has at least a 12-month a window before any competitive products can come out. Well, to create a new standard, it takes something that's not just a little bit different. It takes something that's really new and really captures people's imagination. And the Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, is the only one that meets that standard. Why learn all of this? when you can use Macintosh by simply learning this. Well, I looked at the machine the day it was introduced. My instantaneous reaction was to say that this was the greatest thing that uh, had been invented since the toaster. So the original estimate that we put together was that we would need uh, 2,400 machines. We actually submitted an order just shy of 3,500 machines, and that was for just uh, U.S. offices only. Uh, the Macintosh is the first computer that salespeople have wanted to buy and take home with them. I must fight my secretary every day to use the machine. She asks me, when are you going to lunch? Sales for Mac are going extremely well. If I could get more of them, I could sell more. The answer to that is yes and no. Just just like the Apple II uh, six years ago, I think uh, when, when that was put out, people, the people who made it had no idea what it would be used for today. And I suspect that uh, we'll see the same thing with Macintosh. It's not really right to say we're still learning how to use it. What we're doing is discovering more surprises that are in the machine already. It's really not important that it's a computer. It's a Macintosh. And instead of saying, you have to pay attention to use me, it says, hi, you know, how can I help you?